JC 24-7. A person who is in the habit of drinking and drinking doesn't have to worry about his future because soon he will have no future to worry about. Alcohol and the Bible. I, I'm excited this morning because I've invited a good friend of mine, a pastor of many years experience, who's going to share with us a biblical perspective of alcohol. Pastor Andy Manzano, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Happy to be here. Good. Let's start off with one of the, one of the most popular texts used in regard to alcohol consumption. It's found in, I think it's Proverbs 28, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging. Help our viewing audience to understand this text, Pastor. Well, it gives evidence to the fact of the influence of, of wine mm -hmm. in this context. Right. The word used here, wine is a mocker, the, the statement mocker, or the mm. word mocker, is com comes from a Hebrew word, lutz. Lutz, okay. lutz. Okay. And it says, it makes the mouth to scoff, <laughs> or it causes you to mumble. Mm. It gives the connotation of trying to speak a foreign language, mm. and you don't know how to do it. I tell you. So it is actually mm. saying, uh, Wine makes you sound foolish, or <laughs> being drunk okay. with wine in this okay. context okay. makes you okay. sound foolish, okay. or it makes a fool out of you. Mm. Interestingly, when we, when we follow the, the trend of alcoholic wine, mm -hmm. or strong drink in the Bible, mm -hmm. from Genesis to Revelation, it is, it is coined in a negative. Right. When the word wine is, in, wine is introduced in Scripture, right. It is with the experience of Noah. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says Noah planted a vineyard and mm -hmm. he, you know, he, he processed the winery. Right. And when he drank, he became drunk. The next thing we, we learn is that he is naked in his tent. Mm -hmm. Hmm. A foolish act. I tell you. We read about Lot and his daughters. They make him, made him drunk. Next thing we read is he is... Um, in an incestuous relationship, hmm. while drunk hmm. with his daughters, Belshazzar loses his kingdom I tell you. because he was drunk. Hmm. Herod was influenced hmm. to slay a prophet of God. I tell you. You know? John the Baptist. Because he was drunk, right. John the Baptist. Hmm. And even in Revelation, the <coughs> Bible associates alcohol with false doctrine. Right. People being drunk with false doctrine. Right. So throughout the Bible, there is no place where wine, alcoholic wine, or drunkenness, or, or um, strong drink is mm -hmm. presented mm -hmm. in a way that can bring about a positive result. That. I know it's interesting because in, you referenced Noah. Noah began drinking even after he was saved. Yeah. So that be, being saved does not inoculate you yeah. necessarily against negative influences. He yeah. was happy, so he took a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but you did also speak about John the Baptist, who was beheaded because somebody else drank alcohol. Yeah. Speaking of which, I read in, I think it is Matthew chapter 18, and I want to read it in your hearing and in the hearing of our listening audience. For John, 1818, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he hath a devil. Yes. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, behold, a, a gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Some have used this text to suggest that Jesus himself was involved in alcohol consumption. And as such, if he did it, I can do it. Pastor, tell me, how do you respond to this? Well, actually, um, as a pastor, my, my, my role is <laughs> doing... Um, Bible exegesis, okay. uh, hermeneutics, mm -hmm. so studying scripture in context. Okay. If you read the text... What is, what is hermeneutics, by the way? Hermeneutics is the proper interpretation of a text based on the way the word is used in the text okay. and from the historical background. Beautiful. Okay. So when this text is, um, is, is read, we would see that the scribes and the Pharisees, the leaders of the Jews, are criticizing and condemning Jesus' behavior due to his association mm. 
So, and Jesus is saying, uh, it seems as though nothing God does can please you. Okay. John the Baptist was in the wilderness, mm -hmm. not associating with persons, and you mm. say he's a demon. Mm. That kind of behavior mm -hmm. is demonic. Okay. I am here. Right. I am associating with people. Right. I am fellowshipping with sinners. Right. I'm trying to, de to deliver. Mm -hmm. And you are saying that I am a glutton and a wine bibber. Mm -hmm. On the basis that I am, I am contaminated <laughs> because of who I associate with. That okay. is what the text is okay. saying. Okay. But, and then Jesus goes on to say, Wisdom is justified of a children. That is, he's saying, if you had the proper knowledge, you would understand what okay. I'm telling you. Okay. There is another text in Scripture, Luke chapter 15, that begins by saying, the scribes and Pharisees and the leaders, they, they are questioning Jesus because he's a so eating and drinking hmm. with publicans and okay. sinners. Okay. So that the religious leaders were stigmatizing Jesus. Mm -hmm because he associated with people right. and not so much that he drank okay. alcohol. Okay. It is as if they pass and see the pastor by a bar. Have mercy or by a plenty booth. Yes. <laughs> but you may well go in to pray of with course, somebody and give a track. By all means. But they're saying pastor is a drunkard <laughs> because he's hanging out with drunkards. I tell you. So when the Bible says he came eating and drinking, drinking and does not inference um, or in, it's not inferred by the word drinking, that he was actually drinking Fellow, alcohol. You see, alcohol. in scripture, in scripture, the closest association you can have with somebody is to eat with them. Uh, that is a that is a Hebrew context. Right. Okay. So that so that um, Lot invites the the men of of the angels to come mm. in. Right. The last experience that Jesus had with his disciples was a supper. Hmm. That is the greatest bond right. that you can have. You don't eat with people that you are not family with. Right. And or, even or intend to be family with. Intend. So that right. in Revelation it tells us, um, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Right. And if you open right. the door, I will come, come in and, and sup with oh, you. Beautiful. So that the, in the Hebrew mind, if people eat together, they are one. All right. So that if Jesus is eating and drinking with sinners, he mm. is doing what they are okay, doing. Okay. That, is what, that is the thing. I think the challenge for us sometimes is that we read the scriptures through yeah. Western lenses or lenses yeah. of the West. Yes. So when we hear drinking, yeah. immediately we jump on, yeah. uh, he was a, you know, a drunkard or he was a person engaged yeah. in alcohol. Yeah. God, God presents that in scripture, the, right. the matter of eating as, as family so right. that when Jesus is eating with publicans and sinners, he's letting them know he welcomes them. Okay. And not so much he is like them. Okay. And um, if we read the Bible, we'll see that the grand event, the culmination of things when God is restored, with, the people are restored to God. The Bible right. describes it as a marriage supper right. of the Lamb. Okay. So eating is very significant okay. in the Jewish Beautiful. mind. Beautiful. Well, Pastor, you have been able to weave yourself out of this text, but how do you weave yourself out of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 13, I believe, which says, and when Paul is speaking to his younger intern, as it seems, he said, hey, drink a little wine. Come on, Timothy. Come on. Let's come on. He didn't say drink. He just said drink. He actually qualifies drinking by saying drink a little wine for your stomach's sake. Now, tell me how you weave yourself out of that. There are two things I would want to look at here. Um, Wine is, 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 is the substantive we're thinking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Drink what? Okay? I hear you. Drink wine. We would, we, would, we would deal with the wine aspect. What kind of wine? Mm -hmm. But then, if we, if we want to, to say that he's implying drinking alcoholic wine, there is also the statement, little. So I, if, okay. if, if, I am, if, I am, if I am told I hear you. that Paul is telling Timothy, that is all right to drink alcohol, right. which I am not saying, right. then Paul says, a little. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, are you with me? I hear you. So that you can never become drunk okay. with a little. Right. That is one, which right. I do not agree with. Right. But the substantive is, when Paul told Timothy to drink a little wine, the text says that Timothy had a stomach problem. Okay. Stop using water to solve this problem mm. and use wine mm -hmm. to solve this problem. 
So, so that is where we begin with. This individual has a medical problem. Mm -hmm. So if, if this is the only text we're going to use <laughs> to say that um, Paul endorsed drinking wine, mm -hmm. it has to be for a medical reason, okay. not, a, not a pleasure. Okay. Okay? Right. I, I am dealing with this thing in, in, a, in a systematic way. Sure. But the word used here for wine mm -hmm. is oinos, mm -hmm. which is not alcohol. Mm. There, are, there are two Greek words in the Bible used for wine, and right. this one is oinos. Right. And it is inconsistent with Paul to say drink alcohol when all through the New Testament, Paul speaks against alcohol. Mm to the point where he says, no drunkard shall inherit the kingdom, hmm. you know? And in biblical hum hermeneutics, which is interpreting the text in context, the mm -hmm. words, the, 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 um, the, the way it is used mm -hmm. in, in the scripture, right. we have to look at three things. Okay. What, the, what the writer or the author said, said uh -huh. what the author meant, mm -hmm. and also what the author believed. Okay. So for a, an individual to not be, to believe that wine or alcohol is not good to drink is impractical for that same individual to say, drink okay. strong drink. Okay. And Paul is a Pharisee. Mm. Hmm. By, from history, he's a, right. he's a Pharisee. So right. he is a strict Jew. Right. And in the Jewish economy, a, a, those involved in religious service could not drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. Those involved in administration and politics, kings and princes were not allowed to drink alcohol, and a Nazarite was not allowed to drink alcohol. Mm. So how could one pastor be telling another pastor to use alcohol? Okay. It is inconsistent with theology. Well, some may take that text or some of the injunctions given regarding priests and Pharisees and Nazarites, mm. drinking alcohol or doing other kinds of stuff to suggest that, okay, you are, you're holding a specific position, I don't want you to, to drink or I don't want you to partake, as, it be, as the case might be. Does that therefore give license to those who are not in that position to consume or to partake? The Bible pre puts leaders as role models. Mm -hmm. And the, the persons who are not leaders are supposed to look to the leaders to aspire to be like the leaders. Mm -hmm. I am called in scripture to be like Christ. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is therefore impractical for Christ to tell me, as leader, he will not drink, right. but I am allowed to drink. Mm -hmm. I, I, I read in the scripture, he told his disciples, go ye into all the world and teach all nations whatsoever I have commanded you. Right. And if he is our role model, then it, it, it doesn't make good sense for him to say, he's not allowed to drink, mm -hmm. but we can drink. Mm -hmm. So right, so somebody might say, well, that's for the pastor, the, the pastor because of his role. So mm -hmm. it's not all right for them to say it's only for the pastor. It's also applicable to me as well, if I'm not a pastor. Well, you'll have to factor that into all aspects of life. Okay. It, would, it would also therefore say um, the pastor shouldn't, um, shouldn't do this, right. but we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so right. oh, hey, you know, the pastor you. shouldn't do this, but we can do that. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere in the Bible where <laughs> the leaders are allowed or, or called to a, a place right. where the people are not called to. to the, 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 the people are called to follow the leader. Mm -hmm. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Right. So nowhere in scripture, God sets a standard for leaders and tells the people they have a lower standard. Okay, very good. This brings me to a very contentious issue regarding alcohol in the Bible. There are some who believe that when Christ turned water into wine, it was fermented wine. There's no evidence to suggest otherwise. How do we, and you're using the principle of humanetics, how do we go about differentiating what is fermented as against what is unfermented in the scripture to give comfort to whether Christ allows us to go ahead or he prohibits the the, the, um, of the challenge we have with with scripture is that when it, the words are translated we, there is one word used in general so that the bible talks about wine in one text it says don't drink wine in another text it says um, jesus used wine so 
That is the challenge. It is like um, Paul talking about law in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. The law is not, is not um, binding and the law is still binding. So, so that is why we have to go in and find out what is the background to the whole text. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, the, there are 231 references to the word wine. Mm -hmm. Three Hebrew words, yayin, mm -hmm. terosh, and shaka. Mm -hmm. They all mean different things. So that when we read in one text, it could be yayin, mm -hmm. meaning wine, new wine, and then it would be shaka, meaning strong drink. Whenever the Bible refers to alcohol, strong drink, wine that is able to make you intoxicated, it refers to shaka. But okay. in the English text, it is, it is just wine. Okay, okay. So this particular text where Christ turned water into wine, um, um, of course, that's written in, in Greek. Yeah. Right. Uh, what word is used there and how, um, does it imply unfermented wine? The, the word used for, for wine, which is unfermented, is oinos. Right. And the word used for strong drink okay. is also oinos, hmm. or fermented wine, oinos. So right. that is used as generic. Right. But there's a word called glucose, which is sweet wine or fresh wine. Mm -hmm. So that you, we have to differentiate now which word is used. It is impractical for Jesus to use strong drink in the communion service. Mm. When the Nazarite, the priest, and the leaders were not allowed right. to drink wine. Right. And the wine represents his blood. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that if, we, if we're saying that the wine is strong drink, okay. we are actually saying that Jesus' blood is, is basically yeah. Contaminated. Okay, I hear you. All right. And and Jesus refused um, vinegar on the cross, mm. which is an intoxicating agent. Mm -hmm. He refused that, so it it's, it shows that Jesus would not associate himself with strong drink. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing with with the discussion of wine, mm -hmm. I think I should say is, sure. on one hand, we are told to avoid wine, which is talking about strong drink, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, we are we are told we should use wine. <laughs> to not use wine in the Bible, is to dis in, in your practice in life, is to disassociate yourself with Christ. Okay, yeah. Because the, the communion service, Jesus said, we need to do this in remembrance of, okay. of him. Mm -hmm. So that we need to use wine, but we need to know what kind right. of wine. It might be fair to say, therefore, I don't know if you'll agree, that yeah. wine in its purity was never meant to be on, um, fermented, according to God, in God, God's picture. I think we have, because man has contaminated everything God has made, is it safe to say, therefore, that wine was not never meant to be ferment, a fermented product? I, do, I don't think anything <laughs> that God created was supposed to be used um, to the stage of fermentation or okay. decay. Right. Okay, so that we were, we were created and we were given fresh fruits to eat. Right. We took the fresh fruits and, mm. and processed it to the point right. where it became contaminated right. and it is able to do us harm instead right. of good. All right. Anything that we leave for a period of time goes through a process of decay. Okay. So that fermentation is also a process that the, the item has lost its freshness. All right, all right. Pastor, I'm sure you would have come across a lot, lots of individuals who may either have been affected by alcohol consumption or they may have had families who were affected by their alcohol consumption or both. Yet people still proceed to partake of wine. Why? We, we, addiction is one. Uh, people drink and they... But they, even they, before they, the addiction arises, yeah. What causes a person to start the process, even though they would have heard, hey, drinking is not is injurious to your life? Before I was a, became a, a Christian, a Seventh-day Adventist, mm -hmm. my, our home was a place where we had alcohol. Mm -hmm. You used to drink too, Pastor? My, um, <laughs> my father, um, the, the vicinity of Santa Cruz, okay. growing up, Parang, uh -huh. um, Carnival and Pan, not everybody starts off on, on the right path. Okay. So our home used to have um, 
stuff, especially for Christmas, mm -hmm. right? And um, I remember when I drank my first beer, mm -hmm. and my father asked me uh, while I was at home, yeah, mm -hmm. um, so you are a man? <laughs> because he saw me with a, a, a car. At home, it's for Christmas, invited my friends over, and we're there, and, you know. So I, um, he told me that. He said, you are a man now, you're drinking. Mm -hmm. I associated alcohol with maturity. Hmm. When you when you're big enough, even even our even our 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 culture associates mm -hmm. alcohol with maturity. Mm -hmm. You cannot go into a bar, you cannot buy alcohol unless you are a certain age. A certain age. Right. So people yeah. are told indirectly that to drink you need to be mature. Right. And when somebody sees that, they could they could they could um, adopt the practice of drinking to feel mature okay that is one and in spite of what we see people being drunk and all of that but then some of these things some of these things are sold as pleasure points mm -hmm. nobody will sell uh, put out an ad about alcohol if they want to sell mm -hmm. alcohol and show you a wreck hmm. they will not show right, you right. a car wreck they will not show right. you a home um broken up right. You know, they will show you, you know, uh, um, excitement, excitement yeah, and pleasure, pleasure yeah, and all yeah, of that. Right. And it affects the, 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 the okay. mind. Okay. And then we have the addiction matter. You, you, you started it and you don't know how to Stop. come off. Okay. So, you know, all these dynamics play off. Which brings me to our final question, Pastor, because there are some folk who are looking at this telecast and they are saying, Pastor, I heard what you're saying, but this addiction has gotten the better of me but I want something to help me to get rid of it. Somebody's looking at you, listening to you intently, and is saying, Pastor, help me to overcome my alcohol addiction. What are some of the final words you want to say to them? When we, when we reach the place of addiction is when something that we use has more power over us than we have power over it. Mm -hmm. So that if you find yourself addicted, the, the Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength to do it. It also says in, in the New Testament, the words of Jesus, with men hmm. it is impossible, but hmm. with God all things are possible. Yeah. God offers divine help, right. but um, God also provided for us human support. We have family, we have um, programs, we have churches, there are people available who would add support to your challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I would encourage you to turn to God and turn to persons who will offer you and give you support in this challenge that you have. And with God and positive help, I believe you will make it. I know you will make it in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor, for taking the time to be with us today. Yes, yes, yes. We look forward to having you again on JC 24-7. I must confess that I too have a drinking problem. I can't stop drinking from the well that shall never run dry. It's a problem that's worth having. Trust me, just taste and see how good God is. It's possible if only you trust in him, you can overcome any kind of addiction. Why? Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty only through God. Ask him to pull down the addiction so that you can lift up the name of Christ. Would you promise that? Oh, thank you. And thank you for joining us on JC 24-7. JC 24-7. Chip by chip, tight each other, man to woman, sip by sip, all drunken by the content of the cups in their hands. Samples from varying land masses from everywhere in this land. None such occurrence on this island except this time when eyes run wet with the residue from unwarranted eye candy. God's beauty, stolen and seasoned and shown off by some other body, as these scintillating bodies could catch even the 
sermons peeping, beads and feathers and flesh steaming in hot Trinidad sun. This is carnival. This is one festival high on your checklist, but take time to check risk associated with this side of our culture. Sweet calypsos, an uplifting matter contrasted by thieves in the juve with dirty characters to steal and laugh at you whilst you're drunk. I told you wine is a mucker. So wine to more soca and become a victim of danger. Young girls lost in the music and cursed by death so the home girls and church girls is now the chief masqueraders. Everybody's so loose but tongues too tight to talk about the savior. But waist loose to wrap around lewd behavior and end up wrapped in the loop of a stranger which could be a loose holding danger. Enough energy drinks might give you a bird's eyes boost allowing you to hover over your situation so you can see the covers under which you covered and couldn't be. Bothered for freedom must be expressed in the most lustful poses to make front page of express and you arm with your punching. Many will call, but few refuse to be left in that place where you are a chosen generation required to portray less sins. You could jam down morality because you just think that the human should be free to feel how he feels to feel, ignoring that in the heavenly field, the games you should play is minus the revelry. Mind us the exposure and adultery. Something is wrong with the things you do to a stranger. Clearly, you all are not married. And this display of beauty has degraded to a display of foolery. Lord, arrest me so the beat of their unchained rhythms don't move me. Them boys who take up the movement of soca forget the vision of the father are shorty. And them boys who pick up mass making take nakedness and call it creativity. And them boys who pick up God forsaken exchange salvation for revelry. At some point in this poem, you'd realize that. I'm a Christian and you might try to hate me, but my words will always reflect my philosophy. So if it cannot sound like Christ, then I might stop doing poetry. But once it sounds right and brings light to the dark, then I'll set these words aflame. Call my pen a spark as Trinity to the bone, but it's only Christ in my heart. It's time to restart and refit our carnival starter kit. Nothing wrong with freedom of expression, but something wrong with how we doing it. Trust in you, Jesus all the way. JC 24-7. Thanks to all who supported us as we began the shaking. The experience continues with a grand morality march on February the 21st from 4 p.m. from the Yoland Pumpy Ground Princess Town. Come march with us, your seven-day Adventist friends, showing your support and solidarity for principles and virtues we all hold day. And on February the 22nd from 8 a.m. for a free market day at an Adventist church near you. Bring out your produce and let's exchange for a change. For further information, please contact 760-1763. Be a part of the shaking. <laughs> 